The Education Committee of Parliament has expressed dissatisfaction with the way the education system is currently handled. And according to the chairperson of the committee, this is to be looked into. Just maybe a reminder, we have four cardinal roles. Representation, legislation making laws, budget appropriation, and oversight. So definitely we appropriated funds and activities have been taking place even before the lockdown. So visiting those schools, seeing what is happening, how people are prepared, is part of our responsibility as one of our soil roles. It is part of our work. He has also highlighted the areas which he think can be used to cover up for the lost time of not schooling. Reason being that children have been kept home for long. The system is becoming a little bit stagnated. People, the ch children are not moving from one level to the other. And yet we have also noted that COVID is here with us. It is not going anywhere. We are going to live with it. So there must be vaccination done as quickly as possible. But we appreciate the challenges of getting the vaccine. But government must fast track that to ensure that teachers are vaccinated. If any teacher doesn't get vaccinated, then he should not enter school. Then they should be testing PCR testing free of charge for our children. Government can take the vaccination material at every health center in the areas of locality, get samples, have them tested, and children go back to school. And they can bring them in a phased manner to ensure that by December, those who are already in school complete their level at which we, they are. Then two, the senior ones and senior five could come join in January and then we proceed. The deputy chairperson of the committee, Kuthbat, has urged members to give priority to the sectoral committee since their constituency will benefit a lot. As a member of parliament, I think the biggest opportunity you members have especially to benefit the constituencies you represent is in the sectoral committees. So I want to encourage you. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not being selfish because I'm a leader of this committee, but I want to encourage you that really your participation in sectoral committees certainly is going to go a long way in addressing some of the challenges we have in your constituency directly. Resige John Ntamuhira, the chairperson, promised to work hand in hand with the ministry and other attached agencies so that the country can benefit from the committee. And these other classes come in phases. So that by December, the, those classes which are still continuing have moved to the second level. The curriculum, the ministry must work with the, ministry, the curriculum, National Curriculum Development Center to remove redundancies within the curriculum. We are, we are at war, we are not doing things now in the, a, a smooth way. No. Remove redundancies from the curriculum, compress it, teach these students so that by December they are done and in January we get senior five and senior one in the schools. Fiona Nyamutoro, the National Female Youth Member of Parliament, has promised to do her best to see that school goers can be catered for in the area of education system. Looking at very many issues on how best we can revive young people to go back to school because we're having very many contradicting stories of people delaying to attend classes, of having two different sects of classes. Uh, a honorable colleague here raised an issue of where we have two sets of senior ones, two sets of senior fours. We have children, uh, children growing older than the classes that they are supposed to be in. So I think it's a matter of urgency. As we are tackling the pandemic, we need to ensure that education, which is a bedrock of development and for the future, is handled as well. In the same line, the Nebi woman member of parliament, Ashib Agnes, has complained about the e-learning system, which is being looked to as a solution to the stagnating education system in Uganda during this pandemic. Radio we are talking about. So when people talk about e-learning, TV, it really pains me so much because not everybody in Uganda has the TV. Then too, when we come to the e-learning, First of all, there, is, there are some areas in Uganda, as I talk now, like where I come from, there is no network. Now, how is the e-learning going to be? How are we going to achieve out of the e-learning minus network, besides having the smartphone? And I think there is one thing even people are not forgetting. 
even people who are having the smartphones, the laptops, there is an issue that has come. The tax on the data. It's too, too, too high. People are already complaining. And these are people who at least have in the country. This story has been compiled by Isa Chigongo for Channel 44 Prime News.